Ted Sweetland was my uncle, the third son and fifth child in a family that eventually numbered seven children. I never knew Uncle Ted because he died during World War II. But he was a hero in our family, kind of a myth too. Then I found his war diary. It begins on the day Pearl Harbor was bombed. Carl and I were sitting in the car, drinking beer and arguing the universality of truth, beauty, and morality when some citizen came up to the car. He informed us that Japan had bombed Manila and Honolulu. She was shocked. I elated. The cards are all on the table and may the devil take the hindmost. Isn't it marvelous that even with social stability, such violent upheavals can still result? I propose a toast, that it be long and bloody, but contritely added, for those that deserve it. Ted was a fighter pilot, one of the 65,000 Allied troops who landed with Operation Torch in North Africa in November 1942. He never left. The German pilot who killed him was Joachim Münchenberg. Joachim's war started three years before Ted's, when Hitler invaded Poland. By 1942, Joachim was a seasoned professional with dozens of kills to his credit. In Germany, he was famous. There were even postcards made with his image. Ted wasn't famous. He was a rookie, one of the thousands who served his country but Ted and Joachim were nearly the same age when they died. Always young, someone's child, born six months apart into privileged families. As children, they played similar games. If they had been neighbors, they would have been friends. Maybe. If they had gone to the same schools, would they have fought side by side for Hitler? For Roosevelt? If Ted had been born in Germany, would he have been a Nazi? What had they learned to believe? What were they fighting for? In 1933, both boys were 14 when Hitler used the tools of democracy to smash democracy itself. Demonstrations were banned, presses were nationalized, and Jews were demonized. As Joseph Goebbels, Hitler's minister of propaganda and enlightenment said, the essence of propaganda consists in winning people over to an idea so sincerely that in the end, they can never escape from it. In America, the airwaves were noisy, as America First isolationists argued that whatever was happening in Europe was not America's business. Ted added his voice in college radio debates, wondering aloud where he stood. In spring 1941, he enlisted. But much earlier, when they were both 14, Ted and Joachim were already becoming men who would fight for the values they had learned to believe. They would become sons at war, their stars destined to cross, the charred wreckage of their planes etching the earth. From the air, they looked like twin crosses, side by side.